Does the color of the sky mean anything special to you? It does to me. A hell of a lot. When I close my eyes, the sky in my dreams is a deep, dark blue. Pilots have been in my family for four generations. Flying's in my DNA. Even so, my grandpa didn't want me joining the Air Force. He lost faith in the Ocean Air Defense the day my dad died in battle. You know, Abby, I wish you could see what it's like up there. Cruising above the clouds, the dark blue of the stratosphere. Nothing beats being at the controls and seeing it from the cockpit. Look here. Gramps tossed a magazine over to me with an article. Unmanned fighters are no longer a dream, it read. Pilots taking to the skies will soon be a distant memory. I don't see anything good coming from that. Know what? Lying smack dab in the middle of the desert west of here, there's a bunch of planes from the last war. Some of them have been mothballed, but most of them are just rusted piles of junk waiting to be scrapped. Gramps was really good friends with the super there, so he got to take whatever he wanted, no questions asked. That's how we got the parts to build our own plane. Now, when I say we, I mean me, my grandpa, and his old war buddies. I cut my teeth working with those geezers. They taught me their skills and some dirty jokes. But with their aging eyeballs and whatnot, I ended up having to do most of the work myself. I was at the airstrip doing some flight training when I saw it. A prototype drone. It wasn't much of a plane, more of a trash can with wings. Laugh at it all you want, kid. But technology's always changing. If you don't keep up with it, it'll leave your ass behind. It took six years and eight months to get that engine running. And it took us another year and a half after that to finally get the balance of the airframe just right. I'd gone from being a little girl to, well, still a girl, just older. But now, I was all alone. <sighs> Wherever the souls of my Gramps and his pals are flying, I hope it's peaceful. Then, finally, I was ready to break the sound barrier. All this plane could do was take off, accelerate, and fly up. as fighters. They were tailing something. A drone. They were going full out chasing that thing. Doing 30 G's at least. Damn, I've never seen anything move that fast. It had a rose painted on it. The Erusion emblem. But that country's a whole continent away from here. Well, you should have been wearing a vest with these pieces of junk. 
should have built it to turn two. Everyone here? Settle down. I said settle down. You have all been instrumental in helping to maintain peace in Yuzha as members of the International Union Peacekeeping Force. Until today. Earlier, our radar site informed us that a group of unidentified aircraft was approaching. Communication systems went down immediately afterwards. We are led to conclude that they have attacked the site. Here's your mission. It's possible that the Yuzhin ceasefire agreement has been broken for the first time in over a decade. As of today, the Fort Gray's Air Base Squadron of the IUPF has been put on high alert. All members who have been ordered to sortie fly there immediately. Find the unidentified craft, then use your weapons to round them up and force them to land. If the hostiles counterattack, then you will... What the hell was that? There's smoke! We're under attack. Numerous unidentified aircraft confirmed overhead. What? How is that possible? The tank farm to the north has been bombed. Many injured. Scramble. All units, take off and eliminate the unidentified craft attacking the base. This is not a drill. Squadron aircraft preparations complete. Stand by at the front. Radar sight still silent. Scramble. Get those birds in the sky. We're sitting ducks. What's happening? Bombers incoming. Don't know how many. Let's clear that runway. We don't got all day here. Main squadron head to runway. Column squadron take off. Link to Skykeeper. Hurry, main squadron. Sign is page two. Verify and read back. Page two, clear for takeoff. We are currently assessing the damage to the base. We have confirmed that the aircraft carrier Albatross was sunk. We know the attacking bogies were from Arusia. International Union peacekeeping force bases all over the Yuzhin continent were attacked in the same way. The damage is severe. Many wars are lost by failing to recover from the opening blows. That means successfully retaliating was very important. You may have turned the tides of battle here. You have our thanks. As of 1 p.m. today, the Kingdom of Arugia has declared war on the Ocean Federation. As soon as the news broke out, enemy aircraft began bombing Ocean territory, causing widespread destruction. The Air Defense Force has released a statement saying this violent attack was carried out by drones. They speculate the drones were secretly transported to Osea in shipping containers and launched remotely. The Secretary of the Navy has stated that the enemy was targeting naval ports across the country. According to the Secretary, all of the nation's aircraft carriers, including one still under construction, sustained severe damage in the attacks. We have yet to hear back from the department as to the fate of Ocean carriers currently at sea. Hold on, I've just received breaking news. The International Space Elevator, which is being built in southern Yuzha, has been seized by the Erusian Army. Reports say former President Harling was touring the site at the time, but his current whereabouts are unknown. 
Our sources in government tell us it was Harling's policies regarding the space elevator that caused economic frictions in the area, and which ultimately led to this war. Located near Erugia, on the continent of Yuzha, the space elevator has been under construction for some time now. The Executive Office of the Ocean Federation has declared a national state of emergency. They have ordered all its armed forces, including Yuzhan peacekeepers, to mobilize and make the necessary preparations to launch an immediate counterattack. Ladies and gentlemen, our country is officially at war. Stay tuned for further updates. Breaking news from ENN. Osea launched an attack on the capital today, striking Farbanti from their aircraft carrier, the Kestrel II. After a brutal battle, the Erujian Air Force successfully repelled them. During the air raid, the Osean Air Force fired missiles at the city and managed to shoot down a number of Erujian fighters. Some of the disabled planes then crashed into residential areas. The world was screwed. Twenty years ago, the Earth got slammed by an asteroid. Yuja was on the wrong side of the planet and got hit. Hard. Refugees swarmed the Erujian Republic, the biggest country on the continent, plunging it into chaos. They were desperate and started a war, one they had no hope of winning. That's the war my dad fought and died in. The biggest nations from two continents went head to head, and the so-called righteous Oceans struck the deal that ended it. They fancied themselves the only nation that could bring peace and stability to the world. They even tried saving the Yuzhans, still suffering from the disaster. That's how a space elevator, stretching way up into the sky, ended up being built in Yuzha. Paid for by the Oceans. President Harling said he did it out of compassion for his fellow humans. But to the folks in Erujia, it looked like Osea was moving in to take over. Erujia went from being a republic, back to being a kingdom. When they started this new war, they managed to get the drop on everyone. The second the declaration hit the news, Erujian forces took control of the space elevator without spilling a single drop of blood. President Harling was touring the elevator when it happened and disappeared. Then, while that was going on, the Erujian ships that were docked all around Osea released a swarm of drone fighters they had hidden on board in containers. No one thought they were capable of doing what they did that day. With pinpoint accuracy, they managed to take out everything that was military, and not a single civilian was hurt in the process. Osea pissed lots of people off with their huge military presence around the world. Erujia didn't have the same reach, but they could hit their targets faster and cleaner. And when all this was going down, I just so happened to be in my flying drag racer. In case you were wondering, yeah, I survived. I crashed in a bombed out Ocean Air Force base, then got arrested for breaking wartime aviation laws or some crap. The world went from being at peace to being at war, all in the blink of an eye. I was tried, found guilty, and stuffed into a cargo ship. For company, I had some court-martialed soldiers. And remember those mothballed planes I told you about before? They were loaded on the ship, too. We headed off down south for several days, and then swung east. That's how I got here. I was thousands of kilometers from Arusia, on the opposite side of the Yuzian continent. For a port, it was dull as hell. It had three rusty patrol boats. And the base? The fences were topped with razor wire, the tower had a searchlight and machine guns, and a truck with a gun turret was parked in front of the gate. Its gun was aimed at the yard. This was a prison. This place looked like a full-on base, but half the tanker trucks were just big balloons, and the runways weren't even paved, just painted on the dirt. 
The whole place was just one big fat lie. The only reason I was here is because they knew I'd restored a supersonic plane. They wanted me to make something out of the mothballed planes they brought, that they could park on the fake runway. Can you believe that shit? So, I tried to escape. <laughs> they found out. And set the dogs on me. Eruja has made a declaration to the Ocean Federation and all countries on the Yuzhen continent stationing the IUN peacekeeping force that we are now at war. Right after the declaration was made, surprise attacks began around the continent that have inflicted major damage to our armed forces. Forces aligned with Eruja are currently appearing throughout Yuzhen. The combination of these forces has overwhelmed the majority of the continent, and they are now encroaching on us in the east. Additionally, the multinational space elevator has been seized by the Erusian military. After the previous war, the space elevator became both a symbol of peace and a valuable asset in the fight against growing energy concerns. Whoever has control of it will have enormous influence over the entire continent. We cannot turn a blind eye to this critical situation. The Fort Gray's Air Base Squadron has been entered into the order of battle to reclaim the elevator as an advance element. First, you will attack all hostiles coming in the east of Schofield Plateau to stop any interference with the Allied ground troops. The enemy has deployed several vehicles equipped with anti-air radar along the roads. You are to destroy them. They should not pose much of a threat. However, there is a high likelihood that the attack will draw more enemy air support. If that happens, Fight them off swiftly and establish air superiority. Mage Squadron, Zordi, ASAP. The current target is on rails, but there's still military vehicles and anti-air weaponry. Destroy the target, but HQ has made it clear that no harm should come to civilians and no damage is to be done to public facilities. But, uh, any aircraft shot down could land in civilian territory. No point arguing. That's how war is these days. You've given us air superiority by destroying their radar. The first barrier keeping us from retaking the space elevator is gone. Now is the time to group up and begin the counteroffensive. Let us reclaim what is ours.
surprise attacks carried out after the declaration of war saw the peacekeeping forces of various countries, including Osea, suffer major damage. The ships moored around the space elevator and near Gandar Bay have been hit particularly hard. Numerous ships have been sunk and abandoned. Fortunately, our cutting-edge aircraft carrier Kestrel-2 was at sea, so it was spared from the attack. Kestrel-2 is now preparing to launch another attack against Arugia's capital, Farbanti. The aircraft carrier Vulture also managed to escape Gandar Bay safely. However, it lost all its aircraft, so it's sailing empty. Today, the International Union Peacekeeping Force reclaims its bid to the space elevator. The Fort Gray's Island Air Base Squadron will rendezvous with the carrier Vulture for a joint mission. The first objective will be to seize air superiority in Choppenburg in order to secure a route for the support squadrons. The enemy maintains air superiority over Choppenburg, so expect heavy resistance from enemy aircraft. There's more, so listen carefully. Right from the start of the war, the enemy has been deploying drones. They're using a new advanced type of drone. The unmanned airborne aircraft carrier, the Arsenal Bird, carries this new drone. MQ-101. The Ocean Army headed up the development of the massive arsenal birds and dispatched them to the space elevator to provide support. However, it's been reported that the carriers may have fallen into the hands of the Erujian forces. If that's true, it could be a significant obstacle for us. We need to regain control of the space elevator ASAP. Good luck out there. Squadron aircraft preparations complete. Mage Squadron, this is the situation. Gollum and the other bases squadrons already joined forces and are engaged. You guys will arrive right in the middle of the action. Mage Squadron, eliminate all bandits in the current airspace. We have the upper hand, but that doesn't mean we can ease up. Good luck. Our radar shows no sign of bandits. You're in the clear. I haven't even broken a sweat. They would be crazy to take a fight with us. A rabbit dog would know better. Missile incoming! Evade! Break! Break! What the hell? Caution! Missile! Caution! A large aircraft is approaching. All aircraft, stay alert. Oh. 
Unfortunately, the two-front offensive was a failure. The aircraft carrier Kestrel II was sunk during the attack on Farbanti. Carrier-borne aircraft mistakenly bombed urban areas, and this has turned public opinion in neutral countries against us. Our own forces also suffered heavy losses. If it weren't for a few extraordinary fighters, many of us wouldn't have made it home. The situation is grim. We have precious little time, however. We have to get to the space elevator. Here he comes. Mihai's looking worse. Thank God he has his granddaughters here to help him out. Their sisters, 15 and 10. Engaging the enemy in combat so we could use his physiological data to improve the drones had always taken a toll on Mihai's body. But today, he was really showing his age. The drones we based on his data were being taken down at a faster rate now compared to when the war began. When Mihai found that out, he insisted on flying to the front lines to see it for himself. Sometimes he could be so stubborn. His age wasn't the only thing affecting his health. Over the years, flying at high altitudes for prolonged stretches of time had ravaged and poisoned his body. But he was a man of grit. Today, after 28 years, he saw combat again. If his flight suit still wasn't good enough to protect him, I can't imagine how many Gs he hit today during the battle. As a pilot, he exceeds all our expectations. It's going to take a bit more tweaking before our drones can match his skill. How penal is this penal unit, you ask? This place is a shithole. If you took the stink of all the corruption in the world, then corralled it all in one place, that would give you a pretty good idea of what the air smells like around here. We got all kinds of critters, too. Everything from flea-ridden guards, rabid dogs, and a mechanic doing a stretch for life. I can't forget the rats. Yeah, we got those. And some pilots who got their wings clipped, too. One's a great pilot, but a lousy thief. One's a gambler with no luck. And one's an anarchist with no balls. Their job here was to rev the engines on the fake runways. The idea was for Arusha's spy satellite to pick up the heat sig. Even though there weren't any real fighters here, it looked like it on their infrared. I bet you're wondering, if Arugia lost the war, how come they still have a spy satellite? Because someone over there was smart enough to train a bunch of computer nerds to hack into half of Osea's satellites. That's how come. Every now and again, I'd try to bust out. And every single time, those damn dogs would drag me right back. When I was in my cell, I'd hear this voice coming from the guards' room. It was the Erujian princess rallying her people on the Erujian national broadcast. All us prisoners had become big fans of hers. You want to hear something funny? The guards were big fans, too. I swear to God, every time she was on the air, they'd turn up the volume on the radio and sit there listening. 
I could see how someone like her could win the hearts and minds of soldiers and workers alike. When the princess said something, you could tell she meant every word. Lately, she'd been having more fun with her speeches, and that made her seem even more charming. You could say her charm was like a virus. Whenever she'd point out stuff that was wrong with Osia, the prisoners in here went nuts. Hell, if anyone knew how messed up Osia was, it was the prisoners. They'd shout, burn Osia down. No way am I just gonna sit here and rot away in this hellhole. Dark blue. Instead of building fake-ass planes to trick Arusia, I'm gonna build one that'll really take off. You can count on that. As proved by the failure of our previous strategy, the Arsenal Birds have bolstered the enemy's anti-air network. This will be difficult to overcome. However, we still need to get swiftly to the space elevator no matter what it takes. Someone there is counting on us. The hero of the Circum-Pacific War and the man who spearheaded the construction of the space elevator. Osea's former president, Mr. Harling. Mr. Harling was inspecting the elevator when the war broke out. He's been classified as missing since the elevator was taken over by the Erosion forces. However, according to the latest intel, a military officer accompanying Mr. Harling hid him inside the facility. Both are waiting for a chance to escape. Enemy anti-air radar network has been set up around the space elevator. It's likely a large squadron would be detected send a single aircraft through the network and send in a rescue team soon after. A number of anti-air radars have been set up around the space elevator. However, a reconnaissance suggests their network is weakest along the southeastern coast of Selatapura, so we can elude the enemy's observation. There are a lot of rain clouds this time of year. Flying through the clouds will enable us to stay hidden from their radar. If you happen to be detected by their radar, we will be forced to abort the mission. The lone pilot will head up this strategy as you, Trigger. After you bust through, secure the rescue craft's landing zone by taking out the anti-air weapons. Gollum and others will arrive shortly for support. Provide escort for Mr. Harling's craft after rendezvous. Good luck out there, everyone. Aircraft preparations complete. Sortie ASAP. Entering operation area. Imposing radio silence. We'll radio you, but you are not permitted to make contact. If you're spotted, the mission is over. Stay out of enemy radar. Use of weaponry is also strictly forbidden. Okay, you're heading up the Harling rescue mission. The success of this mission depends on you. Good luck. Rendezvous point dead ahead. Hang in there. Trigger, the first stage of the mission is clear. Don't celebrate yet. The real fight's about to get started. Roger. Rendezvous point in sight. We're almost there. Bandits over Selatapura Harbor. Their container launched UAVs. Rescue craft tagged on. Initiate. Rescue craft on the ground is defenseless. Gollum and Mage, destroy all hostiles. This is Colonel Johnson. Do you copy? I'm with President Harley. Rescue unit down. Go on with the soldier who has this radio. We'll get Mr. Harley out of here. Sir, we feel the same way. We'll figure something out. The call sign is Mother Goose 1. I've sent the information via the data link. Mother Goose 1? That's the best you can call the one. Mother Goose 1, take off. Let's wait till we're home safe. Mage squad.
Squadron, Mother Goose One is heading south. Provide support. Five minutes remaining. Mother Goose One, UAV on your tail. Take evasive action. I hear you, but this isn't exactly a fire. Disconnect. Understood. An arsenal bird is on its way. Strategic AI chose liberty over justice. The courses have already changed. Mother Goose One here. We're about to leave the airspace. Keep your fingers crossed. Gargoyle, it's time. Attention, Gargoyle Squad. Babble, babble, babble. Three minutes remaining. Gargoyle 3 to Babel. Babel, roger. One has been shot down. Where'd the missile come from? Mage 2 fired that. There was no chance. A friendly missile hit him. Verifying the situation. Stop speculating. Friendly fire. I saw it. Mother Goose 1 exploded in air. No one could have survived. Looks like it tried to protect the elevator. Erosian bastards, they just killed a hero. Mage 1, it's a trigger. The trigger was the closest. UAVs were crawling all over our objective. I told you to keep a goddamn eye on the hatchling. It must have been a mistake. Arsenal Bird is entering. All aircraft withdraw immediately. Trigger, you can't fly for a while. You understand. The operation to rescue former President Harling has failed. Sadly, there is no hope he survived. Trigger, you are suspected of assassinating a former president. There will be an inquiry. There will most probably be a court-martial. Bad news for us here at the prison. The enemy fell for our decoy base. With all the fake planes and trucks we had out, it must have looked to them like the Ocean Air Force was about to go on the attack. Day after day after day after day they bombed us. Osea didn't give a damn. 
We weren't soldiers to them, so go ahead. Bomb us. In their eyes, we were expendable. Worth less than the fake planes in the bunkers. No biggie. While I made fake planes, they had me put together some working ones. Then, some genius at HQ decided we should send it up, so the base looked legit. Thankfully, we had people to crew them. It didn't matter what we were locked up here for anymore. Top brass needed pilots, and criminals were all they had. A crook, a gambler, an anarchist. Just your typical lowlifes. They threw each one of them in a cockpit and sent them up to intercept the enemy's planes. But in the end, it was all just for show. So, up they went, day after day after day. Today they tossed someone new into the mix. Wonder what he did to get sent here. My dad died flying for the Ocean Air Force. When your allies are surrounded, one of the most dangerous missions is giving them cover to retreat. Whoever signed up for that was a real hero. But even more dangerous than that was being the one who had to cover the rear guard's retreat. That was my dad's job, and one time, he called it off. Said it was too late for him. Said anyone else would have done the same. I found that out from a war buddy of his when he came to tell me how my dad died. The next time a retreat happened, my dad volunteered to be in the rear guard. Dumbass. He died all right. No one came to help. The news nearly broke me. Of all the ways to get killed, that's gotta be the most pathetic one ever. Am I right? There's a rumor going around about another inmate, a guy they brought here a little while ago. Get this, talk in the cell block says he was sent here because he killed Harling, the president of Osea during the last war, remember? He's the one that sent my dad on that suicide mission. He's the reason I had to go live with my grandpa and why me and Gramps started building a supersonic jet. He's the reason I ended up here. Maybe I should give that guy a thank you note for killing him. Nah. God, I hate the smell of this place. It's all fake and lies and bullshit. It reeks. All right, guys, I'll let you in on some juicy info. The new guy was found guilty by the International Union Peacekeeping Forces Court Martial. He is the murderer of Harling in the flesh. His tack name's Trigger. Now, as of today, he may be attached to the Ocean Air Force Base 444th Squadron. But that is just some symbolic bullshit. It doesn't really matter if he's Harling's murderer or not. Every last one of you has been incarcerated for one reason or another. You cons have an obligation to atone for your crimes. A few of you in the penal unit know how to fly, and HQ needs to plug the deficit in our Air Force. So they proposed sending you guys on a reconnaissance mission to the Waipolo Mountains. But that idea was flat out rejected. Nope, you'll be atoning for your crimes right here at this base. This base is a decoy designed to draw enemy fire. And as members of this base, you'll be taking hits from the enemy. This will allow our forces to safely prepare a counterattack. Incoming! Switch off that alarm. It's just the usual. I thought Zapland was supposed to be an isolated area. Okay. I'm gonna need a few aircraft to scramble. Again? Wonder how many will lose today. Uh, better than solitary. How many? Enemy aircraft detected over the dummy runway. We just need to make it look like we can put up a fight. Some of those piles of junk can at least take off. Let's get the guiltiest cons in the sky first. We'll start with Harling's murderer. We don't expect you to down any bombers. But what we do want is to make them think that we've got an active base here. It's time to get busy, convicts. Proceed with your mission now. Follow orders, Trigger. Taxi to the runway now. 
Check your altimeter and wait in front of the runway. Control, would you kindly send me up first? Spare eight. Champ, this is the control tower. You're not cleared for takeoff. Obey orders. Go to hell. All aircraft preparing for takeoff. Watch out for spare eight. He's forcing a takeoff. I'll take up command. Any objections? That'll get decided in the skies. <laughs> Too shit. Trigger your call sign to spare 15. Consider it your prisoner number for the air. Commencing deception and interception. Spare 15, the runway's free. You have permission to take off. Go now. Woohoo! My blood's boiling! Toss the jump in solitary once he gets back. If he makes it back, right. when you land. That is clear. Look on. Look at them. Blowing up a bunch of paper planes. The enemy seems to think our Air Force is concentrated on this base. Everything on the ground is fake. Can't the enemy see that? <laughs> Means they're that convincing. Yes, the enemy just hit the control tower. Hey, what's with all the shaking? There's smoke! Ah! Send in the fire team. Not let the enemy get closer. Are you trying to kill me? Shall I order them to shoot down all? Commander. Commander McKenzie? Damn it! Spare squadron, listen up. Shoot down everything carrying bombs. Weapons free. You're clear to engage. Show no mercy. We'll be done by now after ending the odds. All targets confirmed eliminated. Yeah! Hell yeah! Still alive, Harling's murderer? Then dinner's on me tonight. Cut the chatter, Spare Squadron. Mission complete. RTB. Trigger's still with us. Must have the devil in his corner. Spare Seven, what happens if the one you've bet on dies while landing? <laughs> then you win. So what? You're not done? Just checking. Did I say you could take down the enemy? Throw anyone who disobeys into solitary. Mihai's granddaughters liked to keep to themselves mostly. They were well behaved and possessed a sort of quiet elegance. From time to time, I'd catch myself looking at them, wondering what they were talking about. I'm sure everyone on the base did the same. They were such enthralling creatures. Every night, a crowd would gather around Mihai. They were the men tasked with guarding him in the air. Their jackets all bore the same patch, a relic from a nation that was long gone. Decades ago, during the Age of Expansion, the Kingdom of Erugia absorbed many countries. Theirs was one of them. Mihai asked them, Yet what is a nation? Can we actually see the physical lines that divide one from another? People of my generation can no longer speak the language of our homeland. My grandparents always look sad when they see I have no idea what they're saying to me. Mihai didn't say a word after that. His scarred face betrayed no emotion. He didn't get those scars from flying, though. Mihai was originally from Shilaji. His real name is Mihai Dimitru Margarita Cornelio Leopold Blanca Carol Aon Ignatius Rafael Maria Nikitas A. Shilaji. When he was young, he was the heir to the Grand Duchy of Shilaji. Then, revolution broke out among his people. Mihai was betrayed by a close friend who pointed a gun at his face and pulled the trigger. The revolution was successful, but the new country that sprang from it was annexed by the expanding kingdom of Arusia. The Arusian royal family allowed Mihai's family to retain their title and noble standing in the new kingdom. But Mihai surprised them all by signing up for the draft like an ordinary Arusian citizen. He was then accepted into the Air Force Academy by order of the king. Mihai soon became an ace pilot 
When the royal family was ousted and Arugia became a republic, he continued his service for the new regime. Test sites soon flourished. One day, a classmate of Mihai's granddaughter visited. I noticed the rose emblem. She laughed like a princess, and I found out later she was indeed the daughter of Arugia's new ruler. She was the connection to the royal bloodline everyone was looking for, the one to restore the monarchy. This new princess was truly a godsend for the Arusian people. If Mihai's granddaughters were like the moon, she was like the sun, around which everything seemed to orbit. Her face was so expressive, it's no wonder the people of this war-torn country instantly felt at ease when they saw her speeches. They started singing. The pilots of the support plane smiled, even though they wished their nation were independent from hers. Angelic. I wonder how Mihai felt about all of this. It was my job to research his neurological data, after all. I wish I could figure him out. Whatever his feelings were about losing his homeland, he kept hidden, even from me. Your mission is to atone for your crimes by attracting the enemy's attention. First, I want you to head from the base to the desert region of Roca Roja to the northwest. And then second, you will attack the large Arusian base there. We've been unable to verify that base's ability to deal with fighters. You will attack and provoke the enemy into revealing their AA strategy. Get them to fire at you as much as you can. That way, we can confirm where they're firing from. Then it's a case of sending in a regular force to clean them out. For this mission, we prepared a frontline base that can be used for ammo replenishment and aircraft repairs. However, this is not for you guys. Only the regular force has permission to use it. Even if you run out of ammo, don't forget that you're just decoys. You stay out there as targets for the enemy. Head back. 
The bastards who flew off are going to wish they were never born. You guys get a pass. Damn right. I wouldn't be surprised if we're thrown in solitary too. Hey, who wants to bet who goes into solitary? That's what that gambling nut job would say if he was still here. <laughs> Where's your sense of humor, guys? Your buddy's making a joke. Laugh already. You lost claims, but the mission succeeded. However, some of you crossed the return line for supplies and for repairs. This will result in solitary. Take them. You know, I've received a medal for my ingenuity in finding a use for you cons. But just remember, if you disobey orders, there's a special place in solitary confinement for you. Your so-called right to complain was forfeited the moment you chose to break the law. Okay then, go make yourselves useful. An Ocean Air Force squadron is currently entering Arusian territory for reconnaissance. Due to certain factors, their return route has been changed. The new return route will be through Yinshi Valley, a scenic and rocky karst area. The enemy's radar facilities and anti-aircraft weapons hidden on the mountainside pose a serious threat. Your mission is to destroy them and get our guys out in one piece, even if it puts your own lives in danger. And it is important to remember they will send up interceptors if you're detected. So you will need to choose something useful in a dogfight. The weather won't be on your side, but you're doing this whether you like it or not. Worry about the squadron's return route, not your own. Your mission is to get them back safely, which I think is the perfect punishment for your crimes. Aircraft preparations complete. You're cleared to taxi. Spare Squadron, this mission needs to be quick. Target radar facilities and AA weaponry. They're set up on a rugged terrain, and there's a lot of cloud cover. You will be near thunderclouds. Man, you guys were born unlucky. Wait. The dumbass came up with this batshit plan. Just a bit worse. I've never flown this close to a mountain. Spare 15, Fox 2. Destruction of target facility confirmed. The mission doesn't require you to talk. Use your head as well as your hands. Right-o. Careful. The pressure of the mountains. And unless you have a death wish, watch your altitude. All targets destroyed. No complaints here. Caution. Bandits inbound. Here come the UAVs. We might have crossed the line. There they are. Leave this one to our friends. Wish we'd use that hole to get home, too. Things don't always go perfectly. The drones have jumped on the recon team. Our friends aren't equipped for air to air. They need our cover. All 444 aircraft, get them out of there. Not even one is to go down. Destroy the UAVs. That's impossible. I'm not flying in there to help out some assholes I don't know shit about. As we say in my house, there's a thin line between bravery and stupidity. Someone flew into the thunderclouds! Spare 15 has broken through the thunderclouds. Nice work for a dumbass. Trigger's been struck by lightning! Calm down. Check your HUD for errors. You'll make it if you don't panic. Spare 15. All UAVs in the vicinity confirmed destroyed. Nice teamwork. Thanks. Who is that? Tell him I'm grateful. Copy that, Cyclops-1. Spare squadron. Mission is complete. Return to base. Wait a minute. 
you hold it. Doc, oh, give me a break. Do you have more chores for us? Spare 8, champ. Bogey approaching fast from the rear. All available units support spare 8. I don't need any support. This is all mine. Damn it. He's close to my tail. Still not firing. I ain't afraid of it. Spare 8. No dog fighting. Negative. I'm not letting this slide. Said the enemy had one mean son of a bitch flying for him. Our team had a few Air Force hot dogs, real experienced pilots. But this guy swooped in like a hawk, locked on, and took them all out in the blink of an eye. Reminds me of a story Gramps told me once. He said a little while before he retired from active duty, he saw an enemy fighter wipe out an entire formation right in front of him. It was like seeing how a shark works when it's going after its dinner. This enemy pilot stalked Gramps' pals from below, just like how a shark would. Then one by one, he put the bite on them. Sounds like what happened to our guys today. Kinda surprised so many made it back alive. I bet when they saw what was going on, they broke formation and left their buddies to the shark. Hang on. There's three extra planes here. They're foreigners too. You returned without permission and failed as escorts. So how about you rethink your value while in solitary? Take them away. Well, well, what do you know? Pilots made it back to base alive. Treat them well and feed them plenty. After all, we have to get a favorable report out of them. I've spent enough of my time being the commander of some worthless penal unit. chance to talk to one of the pilots that escaped back here, so I took it. Apparently, two of our planes took the enemy on alone. They covered the Allies so they could retreat. The hell kind of idiot does a thing like that? The last pilot to land back at the base was that scrawny anarchist dude. He always had this dumb grin on his face. Like he didn't give a damn about whatever he did to get thrown in here with the rest of us. Was he the one who went gung-ho? I bought him a drink later. After the usual small talk, I turned the topic around to the mission. For an anarchist, he struck me as a bit weird. Nothing like what I expected. He talked a mile a minute and kept going on and on about library books. 
Not encyclopedias, those cheesy adventure novels you read in high school. Nothing against those. I like a good story myself once in a while. But I wasn't here to talk books. Uh, I remember that day well. Amidst the swirling clouds, a fighter squadron was trying to help its allies reach safety. He's pretty foolish, isn't he? I thought so too. Suddenly, a highly skilled enemy fighter squadron appeared and began picking them off at the edges. One by one, they fell right out of the sky. Although, I guess there was nobody around that was even more foolish to go to their aid then. So you simply watch things unfold from a distance. Yeah. I mean, who would have ever thought that I'd just go and follow them straight into the enemy squadron like that? After what felt like decades, I finally got to the info I was looking for. He wasn't the guy. He said he was just following his wingman's lead and managed not to die somehow. The hero on this mission was the new guy. The one that killed Harling. <laughs> How did you feel? I'm still kind of shaken up, actually. But you know, I do feel a certain sense of pride, too. He really is foolish, isn't he? Yep, he sure is. I went to the hangar to have myself a closer look at Trigger's plane. I knew that burnt smell. That's what happens when an engine's been driven to its limit. This pilot was a hot dog. From now on, I was gonna keep my eye on this idiot. From a distance, though. I didn't want to get too tight with someone who was a better pilot than my dad. Even so, I decided to give this guy's plane a little bit of the old Avril magic touch. He needed all the help he could get. Attention! If you disobeyed orders in the previous mission, line up over there. You won't disobey a second time. Do not test my patience. The biggest threat to our forces is the enemy's enormous swarm of drones. In order for our forces to penetrate deep into Arusian territory, we'll need to clear a path. You will destroy the enemy's fuel plant. HQ has found evidence that fuel is being moved intermittently inland from a refinery at the harbor in Artiglio. It's likely they're supplying fuel for the various drone bases. Those of you whose food privileges were taken away already know how this goes. We silence the drones by taking their fuel. Enter via the estuary, take out their AA, destroy the fuel points on both sides of the river and their oil tankers. Remember, you're not bona fide military. You're expendable. Convicts, stand by at the front. Finish. 
Finish your work if you want to stay out of solitary. I'll take jobs like this any day. Megastorm and Nessa 2 is about to arrive. Right. Bring out the trucks. Make sure their routes are split. Take every drop of fuel you can carry. Mission was a success. There's nothing else I need to say. Dismissed. So it looks like we're getting attention from above. If any credit is due, it should come to me. Prisoners deserve nothing. It seems headquarters is starting to view some of you in the penal unit as a valid military force. Or at least that's what the rumors are saying. But that's bullshit. The only reason you're here is to atone for your crimes by carrying out missions. Well, you sit on your ass and get medals. You, solitary, now! Okay, on to the briefing. In this mission, you're going into Arusian territory. We know the Arusian Forces communications facility to the north in the Waipolo Mountains is linked to the swarm of drones. Your mission is critical. You will destroy the facility and then weaken those drones. As it's important, the enemy won't go down without a fight. The area is watched over by spy satellites. If discovered, expect AA missiles. Unless you have a death wish, you must use the clouds for cover around the sides and base of the mountains. Use the clouds to hide from their satellites, and you just might have a chance to shake off their missiles. If you do find a missile on your tail, head to the clouds and pray. Let the missile kill you or crash into the rocks. That much freedom I will give. Convicts, proceed with your mission now. That's the last of the radar sites we needed to destroy. 
That probably put a stop to their satellite's missile guidance capabilities. Someone fly above the clouds. How about you do it? I like the sound of that. You can deal with the exercise. Wait a minute. Hold it. What's going on, Pantog? This is the Air Force Base 444 Squadron. What is your affiliation? Nobody told me there was this many nearby. Incoming Allied fighters, respond.
The mission was a success. There's nothing else I need to say. Dismissed. Hold on, Count. It looks like your kill numbers are going up every day. You know what happens by giving false reports. Anyway, you other pilots should learn from him. I'm getting the hell out of this dump. And when I do, their kill count will make my star shine brighter. Suddenly, we were being treated like a regular unit. We've been ordered to pack everything up and move the base further inland. We even got a transport plane. The funny thing is, no one here remembers I've got a bum leg and, oh, that I'm not a soldier. Take a look at the map. There's an island on the other side of Yuja our Marines landed on. The space elevator's not too far from there. They tell us the airfield's being used as a base to support the elevator. Not sure if I trust that intel. Anyway, the transport plane's gonna drop us there. Without any fighters to cover us. Some genius thought we could commandeer the enemy's jets they left in the hangars, and use those to fight. Y'all aren't real soldiers, they said. Any other day we'd be using you lowlifes to go out and dig up landmines. And prisoners don't get guns. You'll just have to make do with whatever we give you and like it. A phone. They don't let us prisoners near them. But with all the hustle and bustle of moving the base, they forgot to lock this one up. Looks like an antique. I lost my right for a phone call ever since I was arrested and locked up. It's trippy to think that I can just hook it up, dial a number, and talk to someone from my own country. Planning escapes ain't all I'm good at. I'm plenty good at remembering phone numbers, too. A little while later, I headed over to HQ. You must know. We did get a call direct from command. That pipe, what exactly are you doing with it? My grandfather had a lot of friends in the Air Force from his time as a lieutenant. My point? Well, you're going to set out in your own special aircraft. Then you'll send everybody else off in the wrong direction while you head somewhere else. <sighs> All right, fine. But just you and you alone. You're the only one allowed on board. Besides, there's only one seat left. I said, cool. That's exactly what I wanted to hear. Attention, I've received a communication from the General Staff Office. It seems your ability to carry out missions has gotten the attention of the higher-ups. All of you have been pardoned. The Ocean Air Force Base 444 Squadron is now officially legit. In celebration, you are to join the operation to take back the base on Tyler Island in southwestern Yuzhia. The battle is underway, and the airport to the south has been reclaimed. However, fighting with the remaining forces in the north is still active. You will all be stationed at the airport. The battle is not letting up. We expect extensive losses to all involved. Still, the fact that we've gained new ground is a blessing. My time as CO of the penal base is over. All command personnel, including myself, are being moved to a base in far eastern Yuzhia. However, we will be stopping to refuel in Bulgurderest. It's in Erusian territory, with close ties to Osea. Even if we detour, we will still have to fly through Erusian airspace in the end. And that is where we will need you ex-cons to come in. I've selected a number of you with mission experience to provide support. That's all. Dismissed. Hey, Trigger, wait right there. Though I'm not entirely happy with the arrangement, you are going to provide support. The drones might attack again. If they do, protect my aircraft with your life. If the General Staff Office hadn't stepped in and requested you, your ass would have been sent to Tyler Island. You were covered in Harling's blood, yet you still are messing around behind the scenes. 
You breathe in a way I don't like, and I'll shoot you out of the damn sky. Aircraft preparations complete. Stand by at the front. without me. Yeah, I know. I'm heading into hell. Whatever. If the cons here and the dumbass prison guards are going, why shouldn't I? I'm no angel. I mean, my old man died playing hero, and all I do is hate him for it. It ain't gonna be a picnic, that's for sure. Adios, you damn fool. trying to kill the commander, even if they're one of us. Like how you killed Full Band? It was an accident, so shut up. Give me that. I'll do the talking. This is Base Commander McKinsey. I want you idiots to understand the gravity of this operation. My orders take priority. That's it. <sighs> sure wish our cargo would shut up. Arriving shortly at destination. Trigger. It's a breath of fresh air having you out here. Oh, you hear that, Trigger? In our squadron, even the good pilots were criminals. You don't stink like them, Trigger. It looks like not all guard dogs have a good sense of smell. Trigger's got the worst criminal record out of all of us. Count, you were convicted of fraud. You sure as hell don't live up to your name. Save your servants for someone who cares, Preacher. You wouldn't understand, Count. Not until you take a good look in the mirror. Arrived at destination. Rover 1, report your situation. If everything's fine, prepare to land. Ah, oh, would you look at that? Support has kept me alive. This is significant for all of our forces. I left my mark by proving the penal unit's ability as a usable military... All company. aircraft caution. Bogies. One ain't over yet. Unidentified aircraft. They're fast. Real fast. What? Closed in fast. Unknown considered hostile. Respond to the situation. Protect Roper 1. Spare 15 engage. Take down the bandits. Spare 2, support Roper 1 and escort the craft to safety. down. Clear skies all round. Spare 15. You did well. Wait. What now? Four friendlies approaching. Allied fighters. This is the Air Force Base 444 Squadron. What is your affiliation? Got a guard dog out here barking? This is your old friend, Cyclops 1. Cyclops Squadron? What are you doing here? I was tracking an enemy prototype. I wouldn't be surprised if that dumbass from your side was the one who downed it. This is Base Commander McKinsey. I apologize on behalf of that asshole. He really screwed up. He didn't listen to my order to stand down. I'm certain he'll be punished for taking down the unidentified Hello. aircraft. Give me a break. Commander, if you would kindly accompany me to my base, we'll answer any questions you have there. Actually, I'm grateful. Support was unreliable. Respectfully, sir, I believe they got promise. Ordinarily, you get a warm welcome to our base, but the situation is complicated. 
That drone is the enemy's latest experimental craft. We wanted to collect data on its capabilities, but that's gone out the window now, hasn't it? To be honest, I didn't think it could be brought down by anything. Oh yeah, your commander has been transferred to a different post. He's probably headed to the front lines where things are hottest. Well, he did stress his achievements. We need every edge we have. We're currently seeing where we can use you best. Stand by for further orders. Trigger, count. We've received official confirmation about what we're supposed to do with you. The company commander has made it clear he'd like you both to officially join our squadron. This is an unprecedented move. Seems like you've got some people looking out for you. Still, I think it's because of how you've conducted yourselves. I believe you'll be an asset to us. Okay, it's time for your briefing. For a long time, our counteroffensive has been overpowered by the Erosion Drone's auto-intercept system. If a craft enters their airspace and doesn't respond to their IFF, drones automatically take off and move to intercept their target. However, we've discovered that the intercept system has a blind spot. We've acquired this valuable information by sending our other squadrons on dangerous missions to scout the whole area and initiate combat. Of all the pilots assigned to us, only two managed to survive the mission. If we don't act now, before the enemy can fill in the blind spot, those pilots will have sacrificed themselves for nothing. So, we've been ordered to carry out a long-range strategic strike. Operating separately from the main forces as the long-range strategic strike group, we've been developing a strategy in secret. Cyclops Squadron and Strider Squadron will sortie deep into the Erosion territory and will be carrying out specialized, long-range attack strategies. You will carve your way through the territory from the north to the capital of Barbani, attacking important targets along the way. The first operation will involve striking the enemy's main naval force, the Njord Fleet, which is gathered in northern Yuzhu. We've known for some time that there's a large supply base utilized by the enemy fleet in the waters around Snyder's Top. At present, the enemy fleet is concentrated there. Naturally, they intend to attack Eastern Yuzhu, where the Ostian forces are stationed. If we can surprise the enemy with a long-range attack, we could potentially do devastating damage to them. Still, it's highly likely that their advanced fleet are prepared and have started to move. So combat with the enemy fleet is probably unavoidable. We've verified the existence of a large supply base in the sea, as well as a medium-sized one in a valley by an estuary. It's a wide operation area, and there are a number of places you can expect large-scale combat, so we've set up a return line for replenishing supplies. Use it proactively. Anytime you feel the need to stock up on ammo or make repairs to your craft, it's there. While aircraft and ammo can be replaced, the lives of our pilots cannot. We don't want any casualties out there. Remember that. The counterattack has begun. Brace yourselves. Strider Squadron, aircraft prep complete. Sortie ASAP. Refueling initiated. Maintain your current position. Trigger. Call sign is Strider 1. You will be leading Strider Squadron. Count. You'll be Cyclops 2. You'll be under Cyclops 1.
Sorry, but I'm gonna eat while I work. My judgment goes fuzzy when I'm too hungry. How can you talk about food? Trigger, how come you're number one and I'm stuck as number two? Oh well, I guess I can let it slide for now. And we're just supposed to follow you? I heard you're spectacular, Captain. At least with your last squadron. I don't want you slowing us down out there. Half of us are resupplying. We need We're near the valley platform. We can Cyclops too. Stop fluttering about. Stay moved to my ass. Stop treating me like a newborn chick. I've shot down my fair share of enemies. Chirp, 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 little chick. Just stick with your mother here. You come back to the roost safe and sound. was a success. You did more to hobble the enemy's sea power than we first expected. Outstanding work. This should free up our allies who have been bogged down on the east coast. In addition, this success allows us to finally move on and initiate the operation to shoot down the arsenal bird. We have a long road ahead of us. Get some rest while you can. Counteroffensive has changed the course of the war. However, the western part of the continent and the area around the space elevator still remain under erosion control. As you all know, this is because they have those damn arsenal birds controlling the skies around the lighthouse. So, we're going to use Stonehenge for a long-range attack against the arsenal bird. In addition to helping to destroy the asteroid, Stonehenge was also utilized by the Illusion forces as a weapon in the Continental War. However, the majority of the artillery is out of action after an air raid by the Independent State Allied forces. When that happened, the main base was being repaired from the damage caused by the asteroid, so it managed to escape the bombardment. The Ocean Army continued the repairs in secret and managed to reactivate its base systems. Once preparations are complete, we'll be able to fire again. However, the officer in charge has yet to confirm whether it can be fired more than once. In other words, it is looking like we may have only one chance to be able to bring down one of those invulnerable arsenal birds. We're going all in on this one plan. The Erusion forces have detected our movements and are marching on Stonehenge. The arsenal bird is closing in. But if our operation goes as planned, we should be able to shoot it down before it reaches the operation area. We've set up strong points we call Menhirs around Stonehenge. Provide them with air support while keeping air superiority. Our mission is to protect Stonehenge until it can shoot down that monster bird. If we can shoot down even just one arsenal bird, it will significantly reduce the scale of the enemy's air defense network. Stonehenge is our only way of bringing down an arsenal bird. Missing is a luxury we cannot afford. Strider Squadron, proceed to runway. Sortie ASAP.
Attention, all defensive and air support teams. In order to get up and running, what I need most from you is time. As long as you can provide me that, my program will bring down the Arsenal Bird. That was Major Deanna McConey. I'm Warrant Officer Lehman, a specialist. We're now commencing the operation to destroy the Arsenal Bird. It's gonna be a long fight. Don't waste any ammo.
mission succeeded, but at a great cost. This victory marks a strategic turning point. The enemy has only one arsenal bird left, and the defensive grid around the space elevator has been decimated. We can expect a counteroffensive by Ocean forces everywhere. I was born downtown, in our capital. When I recall my homeland, my thoughts are filled with the sights and sounds of the city. But home means something different to each and every one of us. Therefore, I've decided to visit every place where our citizens call home. The Kingdom of Arugia is a land of diversity. Each region has its own unique and special culture. The destruction of one of their arsenal birds has significantly reduced the scale of Arusha's air defense network. Ocean forces have moved into the areas where we gained air superiority and freed over half of the Yuzhian continent. However, Arusha is feeling the pressure and is reacting by attempting to activate the ballistic missile base in the suburbs of Sierra Plata. For the past 72 hours, they've put their resources and people into action and have already entered the final stages of a launch. The missile silo is deep underground. To destroy it, we'll need a bomber to drop a huge deep penetration bomb in a precise place. Unfortunately, that airspace is thick with clouds at the moment, so it'll be difficult for a bomber to hit the target accurately. Normally, we'd wait for the weather to clear, but with the situation being what it is, we don't have that option. So. We will be the bomber's eyes and find the missile silo. You'll all be equipped with targeting pods instead of special weapons. We need you to fly at low altitude, visually identify which silo they're activating, then acquire it with your targeting pod. Once you press the firing switch, the bombers will drop their payload based on the location data provided by the targeting pod. You will need to keep the silo in the center of your sight until the bomb hits its target, or else it will miss entirely. It takes a high level of airmanship to properly guide these bombs to their targets while flying in place. Naturally, we assume the enemy has positioned anti-air artillery and aircraft in the area of operations, so stay alert. Additionally, we suffered human and material losses in the last battle. The Cyclops Squadron will sit this one out. Trigger, it's up to you to make this work with just Strider Squadron. Squadron, sortie ASAP. Arugia only has five IRBM silos in total. Therefore, the enemy's made a number of fake silos to try and throw our bombers off the scent. Did you say fake? They're painted to look like the real thing from the sky. Can't tell the difference. It's the that LRSST that brought down that arsenal bird. Got the bombs. You did the terminal kite. Trigger, the bomb has been dropped. Target destroyed. All missile silos have been destroyed. Wait, what the hell is that? an IRBM launch. Confirmed signature on our radar. Launch site is this dam. Not from the silos? They certainly hit it well. We still have a chance. Shoot it down before it reaches critical altitude. The target will soon reach critical altitude. Ass I kicked while off the company commander's leash. 
Roger that, and I'll be sure to include all the crap you said about Wiseman, too. We have successfully prevented an enemy ballistic missile attack. Strider Squadron, you did very well without your unit commander. We are now preparing for the final stage of our long-range operation, seizing the capital. of an arsenal bird followed by the destruction of their ballistic missile base, Yerusha is running out of ways to counter. This is a great opportunity for the Ocean Army to bolster our power to eventually take down the Erusian capital of Farbanti. The special long-range strategy is entering its final phase. Our objective is to attack and capture the Erusian Air Force Base in Cape Rainey in northern Erusian. This important base is at the forefront of our strategy to establish control of Farbanti. Under the cover of night, our plan is that all squadrons will invade from the valley to the south and mount an air assault on the area. The enemy's observation field has eyes on the skies above the valley, so your altitude will need to be restricted. If you go over a certain altitude, the enemy could spot you, ending the mission in failure. Keep that in mind. Once you arrive, you are to take out the enemy's air defense forces as soon as possible and prepare for the support squadrons. When the air defense forces are neutralized, the helicopter squadron should arrive carrying Marines. The plan is to take control of the base. Getting through the valley is only half the job. Strider Squadron, aircraft prep complete. You're cleared to taxi. Strider 1, you have passed through Waypoint 1. No weapons until you reach the enemy base. All aircraft, reduce altitude. We have altitude restrictions from here on out. Keep altitude below 600 meters. Good. Maintain your current course. Caution. Pull up. You just passed through waypoint 4. Radio silence has been lifted. You're almost at the base. The longer it takes, the worse off will be. Hurry up. We'll finish him off. All right, let's keep the beating. Friendly shot down. There's still quite a few enemies hold up in there. However, we can't afford to wait any longer. Begin the assault. If anyone resists, kill them. Contact! Two o'clock! Go! Go! Fire! Tear down that barricade! Excellent work on the night raid. Submarines have arrived from the Ocean mainland and are refueling. This base will serve as a frontline platform for our mission to take Farbanti. We're almost at the end of this operation. Mihai's second sortie was designed to calculate how his physiology changed under the stress of combat. My job was to compare his performance as a pilot now to when he was younger and understand how his skills evolved. To tell you the truth, I'm not sure I wanted to know the answers anymore. For a man his age, Mihai's body was unbelievably resilient, remarkably flexible. 
His reflexes were as sharp as they ever were. Still, after all those years of flying in the outer layers of the atmosphere, even someone as strong as Mihai wasn't immune to the effects of the strain. The human body is fragile. It was not meant to handle the excessive amounts of radiation that constantly bombarded the stratosphere. For Mihai's second sortie, we used a flight suit that was still untested. He seemed fine on takeoff, but by the time he landed back at the base, he was clearly a mess. He got caught in a surprise dogfight with an especially stubborn enemy. It took a while for Mihai to bring him down. The suit was ineffective. According to the data, it wouldn't let him fly to his full potential. A new flight suit was made to my exact specifications. When it finally arrived, Mihai's granddaughters glared at me with their disapproval. They blamed me for the pain their grandfather had to keep enduring. But Mihai remained stoic. He wasn't the type of man who cared about anything that happened here on the ground. I wasn't worried about it. I was confident the new suit would protect him thoroughly so that he could maneuver his plane any way he wanted. The moment he took off in his new flight suit, I realized what I had failed to before. Right after takeoff, as the wheels retracted, the plane suddenly arced up. It accelerated so quickly. I had never seen a plane move like that before. Mihai hit the high G's multiple times before disappearing into the blue. The support team couldn't even keep up. And then I knew. I understood why he never seemed to care about restoring his stolen country back to its former glory, and why he didn't seem to care about anything that happened here on the ground. Of course, Mihai's kingdom was the sky. The operation to capture Arusha's capital, Farbandi, is beginning. This is the culmination of our work. We need to capture the Erusian Forces' general headquarters in the south of Farbanti and end this war. The plan is for ground troops to attack Farbanti from both the east and north, and a task fleet will attack from the southwest. We will secure air superiority over the capital while providing air support for our allies on the ground and in the water as required. By all accounts, we expect this to be an intense, full-scale battle across land, sea, and air. Should you need to replenish your ammunition or make necessary repairs to your craft, a return line has been set up in the north. During this operation, we will also be tasked with having to destroy the communications satellites that Neruja hacked. If we take down the information communication system that we believe they have control over, it should plunge Eruja into chaos. Once the capital falls, the Illusion military will be isolated and thrown into chaos, making it easier for us to end the war. However, that can't happen until after the capital falls, so you guys are the stars of this battle. Eruja will fight like a tiger, but we cannot lose. We must seize the capital and end this war. Strider Squadron, proceed to runway. Sortie ASAP. Our troops have engaged at Frabanti Reconstruction Park, Silver Bridge, and the submerged area. We need you to help our boys in those three locations. This will end the war. It's time. Commence the operation. Our friends are waiting. That's a hit. You did really well out there. This is sure to bring it into the war. You'll be
beat heroes. I don't know what medals they've got for you, but if you want one, come back in one piece. Box two! Box two! All aircraft, listen carefully. This is Longcaster. We have the upper hand. The enemy headquarters is almost ours. Operation to eliminate all enemy satellites also underway. All going according to plan. The end of the war is in sight. Think of something you'd like to eat, guys, because I'm buying. Roger that. Man, don't jinx us. Ah, you're right. New bogeys. No, five SU-30s inbound. I'm gonna be breaking. It's Mr. Rex. connection with Mission Command. It's not just Mission Command. I'm not getting any response from outside our LOS. Brabante's now under Ocean control. The operation was a success. We didn't get the orders that should have come after the operational success. We'll guide you to the scheduled airport. All aircraft, leave this airspace immediately. Negative. They've got a debt to pay. Count, we all feel the same way. Wiseman died for nothing. This is a peacekeeping force forward base near Erusian territory.
Other Allied aircraft have probably been forced to make emergency landings at other airfields. We don't know much. The mission to capture the capital is nearly complete, but we unfortunately have no intel. The enemy communication satellites are down, and we have confirmed the deaths of several Eruzian leaders. But our enemy was smart. They had a similar plan. Our own communication systems were destroyed at approximately the same time. We have no idea when or if they'll come back online. Stand by for further details. As far as the chaos we find ourselves in these days, it's difficult to say which side pulled the trigger first. Arugia deployed an automatic intercept system with drones. Osea implemented long-range attacks to bypass them. So Arugia decided to sabotage Osea's communications and navigation technology. Arugia couldn't launch a satellite themselves, but they were still able to hack the software of the Osean transmission and navigation systems. Before Osea even noticed, half of their satellites were hijacked. That's when things got ugly. In an attempt to knock out each other's capabilities, both forces launched fighters loaded with anti-satellite missiles at the same time. Only military satellites were targeted. However, their destruction created a debris field in orbit which wiped out scores of other satellites, both private and government owned. What kept the world relatively sane up to that point had been free-flowing data and information. But now, those were gone. All that remained was chaos and confusion. Government and civilian broadcasts and transmissions were cut off. The flow of information had ceased. Forces on both sides of the conflict now found themselves unable to communicate with their superiors. Many of the smaller countries annexed by Arugia and yearning for their independence seized the opportunity and started their own uprisings. As for why some of Osea's military decided to break off from the main force and continue on their own, I have no idea. Perhaps there was some sort of dispute over the chain of command. The continent that had once seen wars that were only fought between Osea and Rugia was now full of numerous conflicts between rival leaders vying for power. Insurgencies were everywhere. I even heard a rumor that a group of Osean convicts had rebelled. Rumors. It never ceased to amaze me that even at a crazy time like this, something as trivial as a rumor could find its way here. Communications from corporate were cut off. Apparently, the entire computer network was down. It was a wise decision to make our drones autonomous with AI instead of being radio controlled. Wise and forward thinking. Even with their GPS offline, they can still use their sensors to navigate as long as they're working properly. I'm sure the drones are still working perfectly, following their mission orders to the letter. I wish I could upload Mihai's new data to them, but without a connection, I can't upload the software to the active drones. The new ones we're making, though, there should still be enough time to upgrade those before they're activated. I'll be taking the data I've acquired away from the front lines now. Oh, and I'll be taking the girls too. I told my assistant Masa it was time to get Mihai's granddaughters ready to leave here. She's not much older than the girls, but she has a way about her, and I'm sure she won't have any trouble with them. I saw a plane flying off in the distance. I imagine it was looking for a safer place. The plane had a rose emblem on it. Rusia's communication networks have been down since their satellites were destroyed. Unfortunately, we are experiencing trouble too. All of Yuzia has been affected, and we don't know when things will be back up and running. We're not even sure if this is Eruzia's doing. Still, we will follow the strategy that was originally planned, and move on to the next operation after liberating Farbanti. Let's get to it!
Since the war began, we've been receiving communications in secret from an officer in the Erusian army. With the capital under our control, Erusia's radical element is losing support quickly, affecting the balance of power. HQ is thinking of using the military officer as a way to gain leverage to settle peace negotiations. The officer is currently hiding in the outskirts of Anchorhead Bay, having joined up with support dispatch from the Ocean Army. The plan is that they'll take a standard vehicle to a rendezvous point at a harbor in the east part of the city, where a helicopter will be waiting. I would like the new Strider Squadron to provide escort for the officer. Cyclops will remain at the base on standby to serve as defense. With the communication network currently down in the capital, I very much doubt Arusia will be able to mount a regimented counterattack. However, it is likely that Arusia's intelligence department and the remaining forces who are aware of the officer's movements will interfere. Keep a close eye on the officer and make sure he stays safe. Our victory in Farbanti has given us a golden opportunity to finally end this war. Be safe out there. Take note that our satellite-based IFF has become unreliable following the recent communications failure. As such, target ID will be done by processing the images from the infrared cameras on your aircraft. Objects will initially appear as unknown on your HUDs, but will be ID'd once you close in on them for a set period of time. Strider Squadron, you're cleared to taxi. To the unidentified Ocean craft, this is Captain Carl of the Ocean Army. Are you here for the escort? You're not the squadron I was expecting. Are you really friendly? It's over. This is Longcaster. Airborne warning and control system for the Ocean Long Range Strategic Strike Group. Captain Carl, they're on our side. And those two pilots we've heard about must be here too. Okay, I hope you're right. Longcaster, are all of these really unknowns? It's a state of civil war. The Erusian army is fighting itself. There's no guarantee the Oceans won't shoot us in this confusion. Well, let me process the unknowns caught in your camps to identify friend or foe. The process will be faster if you get a close-up, well-centered image. Meanwhile, we just run if they shoot us, right? Affirmative. Always identify your target before you fire. Or is something I'll never get used to. But tonight has been a total shock. The city under martial law. Gunfire and the roar of jets echoing through the streets. Officers. They were 
were referred to as Tyrannicals, but there was an unseen force guiding them. It was technology they borrowed from the Belgians. They actually went to war, the performance of the attack drones exceeded their wildest dreams. And they were incredibly clean, which got public opinion and the opportunists within the military on their side. They even manipulated the princess. Belkin technology advanced UAV research within the Erosion Flight Test Center by at least 10 years. They used the flight data from a former ace pilot to create drone AI, but... To us, it's no different than magic or alchemy. Airplanes are meant to be flown by human beings. For those of you listening in, am I wrong? We're heading towards Grunder Park. Rendezvous point in the helipad on this man-made island. We'll ditch the car and take the helicopter from there. of a military group calling itself the Free Erosions.
To respond to the attack on the base, Cyclops has scrambled after being on standby. We'll head up too once our planes are ready. Oh, and Labarth is dead. What did you say? Apparently, he was shot down by another Ocean aircraft after he left the area of operations. I mean, I know it was chaos, but still. At any rate, the sealed order operation has come to a close. We have no idea about a plan for going forward. All we can do for now is watch our own backs. What's up with the commander? He's staying in his room. He's still alive, since we can hear him crying. The island we went to was supposed to have been secured by the ground forces. They hadn't gotten a handle on things by the time we got there, so now we were stuck in the middle of a half-assed campaign. My job was to get the planes ready for combat, 
making repairs and handing them over to our troop of cons. Thing is, the enemy still had the hangars. The comms were still down, so none of us knew what the hell was going on. The last transmission I heard before everything went to shit was that some prisoners from an Ocean military penal unit rioted and managed to escape. They stole some jets and now they were flying around, taking out their former allies left and right. I wonder if any units like ours were out here, creeping around. Hearing the Ocean jets firing at each other overhead chipped away at morale. Since the radio was out, it was quiet. I liked it better that way. All I heard was the gunfire. Here we were, walking around carrying rifles. We were pilots, damn it. Friendly fire will probably kill us. You know things are desperate when the guards that used to lock us into solitary are now telling us it's better we all stick together. I guess they think our odds of surviving this war are better that way. After walking for miles across the battlefield, we came across the wreckage of a plane. Passenger, not military. I knew that rose. It was an erosion liaison plane. The guard's dogs smelled something and took off. They led us to a cliff. And the bodies. Today, I lost everything. When Osea attacked our capital, my father, a man who was never really suited to being the king, was killed. I was to be flown out of the war zone to safety, but the plane was shot down by rebels. The entire crew was killed in the crash. Soldiers appeared and one shot at me. My dog went after him and shot him to pieces. He was my best friend. After all those speeches I gave, about working together for peace. I thought everyone felt the same as I did. <gasps> I'm sure the soldier who shot at me knew I was the princess of Erugia. He was Erugian too. More soldiers have come. Now, there is no one left to protect me. I am so numb, I cannot move. Watch as one of their dogs approaches and sniffs mournfully at my dead friend. I wonder if it grieves for him as much as I do. I can barely think. I feel weaker by the minute. I don't know who these soldiers are with, but I managed to take a sip of the water they gave me. How long have you been here? Somehow, I muster the courage to answer the woman's question. Tell her I've been there three days. They gather around me with grim looks on their faces. What would they do if they knew I was the Erosion Princess? After searching the cockpit of the plane, the woman who spoke to me before came back to me. This is an air-to-ground tactical radio. It still works! I noticed she walked with a limp. She knelt down next to me and asked her companions to give me some food. And then, very softly, she said, You see, I used to listen to your broadcasts, your royal highness. <laughs> Just what did you see here? Okay, enough talk. Your opinions have all been taken into consideration. Beyond the seizure of Forbanti, which is important, and supporting the Erusian officer. At this point, I just don't know what our strategy is, or what our mission will be. Radio communication is still patchy for both the military and civilians, so we're getting zip from mission command about our orders. Still, with countless erosion forces in the area, it's too dangerous for us to stay around here waiting for a miracle. Now, regarding Count's suggestion that 
think about self-defense. Uh, I think we should make a break for Tyler Island. It was a large Ocean base before the start of the war. Count says his previous squadron took part in an operation to seize control of the island. It has the only base that will get us to the space elevator without refueling. It's also a transport facility for supply ships that provide drones and ammo for arsenal birds. For the Ocean forces that are looking to reclaim the space elevator, those are two great reasons in its favor. If everything went according to plan, the base may already be in allied hands when we get there. Though based on what Count told me about the island operation, it won't be easy to seize control. If the ground troops have managed to open the bridgehead, the transport route to Osea for supply ships should be available. With so much at stake, I can't imagine Arusia just giving it up without a fight. Things could really have gone bad. Even if there are enemies left, they should be pretty easy to suppress. I just want to go home, man. Me too. With that look on your face, Trigger, I know exactly what you want. Trigger's ready to kick ass, then so am I. Damn straight. We're with you, Trigger. It's decided then. Let's get all the aircraft and haul ass to Tyler Island. Although we can avoid the Arsenal Bird's anti-air network, there's still remnants from the Erosion forces. I want to get to the island without getting into any unnecessary combat. Make a fast craft and fix it how you want. Pack for a long trip, but remember, if you drag your ass, you'll get left behind. Strider Squadron, sortie ASAP. This is Tango 2-3, pursued by multiple tanks and APCs. Now all go down if we don't pull back the landing craft. If what? Abandoned Tango 2-3? Something's not right. Tango 2-3, we don't have the firepower to assist you. You're on your own. Please, we need help! Wagtail is on the Ocean landing ship. What's going on? What did you say? Multiple bogeys inbound. Damn it. Prepare for anti-air combat. This is the AWACS Longcaster. The aircraft in your area belong to the LRSSG. Now light aircraft. A retreating vehicle is taking fire. Requesting assistance. Roger. Update us on Tyler Island. Couldn't be worse. Our forces are scattered and on the run. Strider 1, there we go, line. We were waiting for retreating units here to carry them out to safety. Do me a favor, Longcaster. Many of our allies are cut off. They need support and an escape route. Understood. We'll do what we can. Let's help retreating OC forces. Take out any hostiles in their area. Watch control, watch out. Enemy pilots are present. They're starting to fire blindly at us. You can see they're getting dead. 
Hey, you. Dumbass with the scratches on his tail. You hear me? I need you to help some people. There's a group of refugees surrounded by Russian tanks right here. Needless to say, their future's not looking too bright. This is a secure military line. Who is this? Me. Call me the Scrap Queen. <laughs> Longcaster, she's an ally. Trigger and I throw that voice anywhere. here. All right. Good work in sinking the supply ships, not to mention saving the refugees. However, we're in no position to start celebrating. Even the commander here is starting to fray from the stress. Can't say I blame him. Now, Tyler Island is in a state of complete anarchy. This base isn't safe either. The faces you see around you are the only friends we've got. Take a good look. We found a boat, then sailed away from the island. We had to. We didn't belong there. The new guy's name was George. I noticed when the anarchist said his name, he said it with a thick Belkan accent. How did you know that he was from Belka? Well, 
Both my parents were from Belka, so... You never told me that. They say that Belkins are known for their conspiracies. <laughs> That's just a stereotype. Now, I simply stated my honest opinion and was thrown in jail for it. The princess sat there looking miserable. That was a dumbass stunt she pulled back there, but it got us on this boat. Take a look at that. This ship is heading for a single rope that's hanging down from the sky. Do you know how far the end of that rope reaches? Outer space. No. It is a direct connection to the very potential of mankind itself. Or at least it was until war erupted. It's my strong belief that the rope might be connected to a very distant, faraway source of, of great conflict and strife. Even long before the war, the whole world started falling apart once Harling began trying to build it. I often wonder, what was going through Harling's mind when, when he was trying to destroy the very thing that so many people were sacrificed in order to create? Sacrificed? What do you mean? Have you seen all of those countless old space shuttles on Tyler Island that are no longer in use? Yeah. <laughs> I always thought of them as a good source of scrap. They're an obsolete technology that was abandoned during the construction of the space elevator. Which would mean that if the space elevator was destroyed, it would be that much harder for mankind to reach the stars. Until we find another way. But even then, Harling still went ahead and tried to destroy it. At the cost of his own life. That's not the way I heard it. What I heard was that he sacrificed himself to protect the tower from an incoming missile. Oh, I was told he tried to fly his ship into the tower in order to destroy it. I wonder which story is true, your royal highness. I don't know. Looking at it objectively, it's reasonable to believe that Harling had both options before him. When it comes to which one you think he took, I guess it's like a mirror. Yes, it is. It's like a mirror looking into your own soul, based on whichever choice you believe it was. At the moment, though, I can only see darkness. I think... I think that thing should be destroyed. It's time for the briefing. Although, since we don't have any contact with HQ, it's not like this is an official mission. Anyway, it looks like the seizure of Tyler Island and the relief from Osea have been postponed. In the meantime, we just have to do what we can to survive. Since losing its capital city of Ferbanti, Eurusian forces have separated into smaller, autonomous factions. It looks like Eurusia's largest force and leading faction will pass through the area around this base. The space elevator is significant to them, so they're probably heading there. Should we intercept? Why? I doubt they're gonna start a fight now. Our top priority should be to get home. Let's go already. Yeah. It's not like we have the supplies, power, or even a real reason to put up a fight. But, what are we going to do if they bring the fight to us? We need to be ready to push them back. If we head inland from here towards Arusha, there's an old castle that's been converted into a stockpiling base. Shalaji Castle. 
It's currently occupied by some of the erosion forces that broke off, but we need ammo and fuel. They appear to have converted a freeway into a runway, so we can expect them to have the capacity for air combat. But they'll be easier to handle than Arusha's lead faction. But we can't use all our aircraft to attack. The transport carrying the stolen supplies needs support. Okay, Strider Squadron. You head out first, and neuter the dogs at the stockpiling base. Rendezvous with Cyclops Squadron, who will bring the transport. Then we bring the supplies back to this base. Got it. Aircraft are our only threat. Sounds good. We'll make it. We're all gonna fly home. Together. Strider Squadron, aircraft prep complete. You're cleared to taxi. No Ocean forces are in the region ahead. No allies here. No need to ID your target. We've set a number of priority targets, focusing on their anti-aircraft weaponry. Okay, team. Get to work. Target locked. There are more vehicles along the road. They don't appear to be military. They're Arusian refugees. They must be fleeing since the conflict got worse. Unidentified aircraft. Identify it once or we'll open fire. What are you talking about? They already are firing on us. The enemy's confused. I know. We're all out of ammo. Don't give up. We're not going to lose our country again. So what's this faction split from the Erujian military? The autonomous state of Shalaji used to be a nation. The region has always leaned towards independence. Why are they after Those who want to restore their homelands fought. Apparently, their core consists of officers from Bosnich, which neighbored Shalaji. Are they our enemies? They're our enemies' enemy, but not our friends. The resistance is strong. They seem pretty desperate. Take in both civilians and refugees without discrimination. Get away from the stone buildings and take shelter somewhere sturdier or underground. Drop where you are and cover your head if you hear jet engines. The whole squad no one wants to take from us. There are more enemy aircraft, but one is coming up. I heard about the big strikes when I was at the of high cultural value. It's unfortunate we had to bomb it like that. We do what we need to survive, right? Not something I'll tell my son about. Castle take off. Soul Squadron, stand by. Negative. This battle so far we don't get up there. Move on with hope of restoration. Don't worry. As long as we accelerate and climb the tower, they won't be able to shoot us down that easily. Their interceptors are in the air. All right. Off speed inside the tunnel is insane. Soul Squadron, airborne. Shoot the invaders out of our skies. Good luck, Soul Squadron. Understood it. You are in violation of Shalaji airspace. Turn around or we'll be forced to shoot you down. This is the OCM Long Range Strategic Strike Group. Land immediately and hand over your planes and base to us. Aircraft. I'm testing this aircraft. You must find 
Shot down, Mr. X. Yeah, it's gonna take something else entirely to end this thing. I just don't know what. The resupply went well. We should be okay on food and fuel reserves for a little while at least. Luckily, the rumor that the Erusian army is advancing nearby is only a rumor. There's no sign of them from the skies. Rumors, rumors, rumors. This is what happens when you lose communications. But we got one good fact. The plane trigger shot down was an advanced model of the XO-2 Wyvern. It was developed in the last Continental War. Erugia had a lot up their sleeves. Apparently, they were even supposed to have Belkin aircraft back in the first war. What if Trigger couldn't shoot it down? Just thinking about it gives me chills. We're lucky to be here. In war, you never know what's lurking behind the curtains. But it looks like everything's loose now. Solid chain of command, rest periods after sorties, a battlefield where you know friend from foe. All of that's gone now, lost in a fog of confusion. Feels like a distant dream. Now, just how the hell are we gonna get out of this mess? When we got to the mainland, we found the space elevator's support facility. 
I guess this was the factory where they built the gigantic structure the elevator traveled in. There was this little girl sitting in front of a mural. When the princess saw her, she shuddered like she'd seen a ghost. The girl had a stuffed animal. This was the day after the shit went down at Tyler Island. She walked right up to the princess, took her hand, and led her into the factory. One thing's for sure, they knew each other. The factory had been converted to a production line for erosion drones. It was fully automated and chugging along, making drone after drone after drone. Once they got inside, the princess stopped and just stood there. Another girl was there with a man in a lab coat. He was trying to use his keyboard, but she wouldn't let him. She took a data chip and threw it on the ground. Then she walked over to us and took the gun from the prison guard's holster. She pulled the trigger and destroyed the chip. Later, I found out that the girl with the gun and the one with the stuffed animal were sisters. They were also the granddaughters of Mihai A. Shalaji, the legendary pilot. Gramps used to talk about him. He said Mihai was the top ace from two wars ago. Know any Belkins? Because this guy was a Belkin, and they love to stir shit up. Pitting nations against other nations is a particular favorite of theirs along with developing hyper-advanced technology. That's right. I'm Belkin, born and raised. My country is gone now. Rather than surrender to its enemy, Belka detonated seven nuclear weapons on its own soil. My people scattered around the globe, living in the shadows of other countries. We had a new purpose, to breed wars. The theory was that through war, we could achieve our destiny and our revenge. I had just finished inputting Mihai's data when his granddaughter came in. She destroyed the only copy I had of the information I squeezed out of him. The girl loved Mihai. No one knew more than her just how hard I pushed her grandfather for that data, how much I made him sacrifice in the process. I promised his granddaughters that his efforts were not in vain, that it could end this terrible war. But in the end, it only caused more chaos and despair. We were responsible for all this damage, all this tragedy. Now, we were going to pay for it. The Erusians, once our allies, would see to that. I had lost the drive to continue my work, even before I noticed Mihai's granddaughters eyeing me with suspicion that one day. I should have stopped then, for all our sakes. Mihai's granddaughter tossed the gun aside. She said if she resorted to killing, she'd just end up like the rest of us. And by us, she meant everyone, including the princess. Like me, the princess was afraid to look into the girl's eyes. She knew that by encouraging her people, she kept the war going. Mihai and his granddaughter were victims of it, and now, they too were paying the price. Is this for Belka? Or for Erugia? My grandfather had only one wish, to continue soaring through the endless skies. That was the only place where he felt alive. But I don't even have a country to call home let alone the sky. The Black Forest, the lake, they are no longer mine. Even though those lands were once cherished by my late mother, we have to learn to put that sense of nostalgia behind us and behave like mature adults. My homeland. She's right. It feels so far away now. The woman with the rifle approached me. 
She was focused on more pressing issues. I checked the computer. All of the data on the legendary ace had already been installed. No. I pulled it before it was completed. However, there are two aircraft that are already scheduled to be manufactured based on that data. We must destroy the factory. This isn't the only one. There are more facilities just like it. And the two planes containing the data will be manufactured at one of those facilities. So, this place runs on solar power that the space elevator generates, right? How about the others? We can destroy the space elevator and cut the power to them. First things first, let's take this one out. I'll show you which locations to target. I stood there, thinking about that mural by the factory's entrance. Harling commissioned it to be painted. I realized that in the background, behind the dancing figures, the artist had painted several space elevators. I understand now. The space elevator wasn't designed to exploit Erugia after all. Good. And afterwards, we'll bring down the space elevator itself. No matter why it was built, right now, it's the root of this chaos. I wonder... Yes? I wonder... which path you would choose... when looking at Harling's mirror. Let's get the briefing started. We've done enough air operations. Just let us go home. There's no path for us to get home. Whatever direction you fly, you'll be right into a hail of enemy fire. Earlier, we received a communication via the partially restored general network. Here is what it contained. Apparently, the erosion radicals have gathered around the space element. As it's a source of energy, give the war monitor powerful energy source, and you give them the luxury to keep on fighting. In response to this, people from both Osea and Arusia have joined forces and will take down the final arsenal bird in a saturation attack from the air to the sea. Once that's achieved, they'll take the space elevator from the aggressors. Has the source been verified? It could be fake. I hear you. Take a look at what's written at the end. Hey, dumbass. If you want to bring the world back from the brink, go to the lighthouse and see the future. Dumbass? Sounds familiar. Certainly does. It's from those guys we met in Tyler Island, the 444 squad. It's a message to all those looking to end the war. But I also think it's a message for Trick. Guess we'll do what it says. Okay. Well then, I'm thinking we go roast that damn bird. Looks like we're all on the same page. It's time to end this war. Time to fly, guys. Let's go get that arsenal. Aircraft in the coalition. 
So they have been ID'd as friendly via the data link. Just confirmed it. The Russian government aircraft, including drones, will show up as hostiles. You two aces, I think it is time to show us what you've got. To all of you who have gathered here, regardless of your country, this is headquarters of the Ocean Army Southern Command. Wait, you forget that designation. We are a coalition formed exclusively for the sole purpose of taking down the Arsenal Bird. Wait until we're ready to strike the Arsenal Bird in unison. Roger. Ross, you're totally speaking on an open channel. The enemy can hear everything he's saying. There's no other choice. The Illusion aircraft are in the coalition as well. This is Gold Squadron and Rigel Squadron of the Illusion Air Force. We're here on our own. Broadcaster, we're entering your airspace. This is you too. This is Mr. X's crew. Count, ease up. Engagement is forbidden. Don't worry, I know. We need every bird we can call upon. Even if they were flying with the guy that killed Wiseman. Some other squadrons are over here for the All this just to keep a war going. Is this a rebellion? With the battle for independence. Take okay, down the Arsenal Bird and enter the new country. Some coalition this has turned out to be, huh? They'll keep talking big once the war is over, too. You can bet on it. Something or someone to guide us. Okay, commencing transmission. I'm speaking with the terrestrial broadcasting and video transmission networks. It's not important why. Right. We are Destroy the space elevator. Second, we want power to the drone factory oh, cut in order to put a stop to all the war and chaos that its products caused. Last, we want to bring an end to this pointless war that has given rise to a state of anarchy. Let me tell you what's going on right now. The land is overrun with refugees who have lost their homes. This is no isolated incident. In spite of that, the war continues to rage overhead. Take a look. See that line continuing above the horizon? The cable goes up to the sky as far as the eye can see. Not many people know this, but the space elevator is the tallest transmission tower. In theory, it's radio waves cover exactly half the road. We've jacked up signal in order to reach out to you. Call warning. Call warning. Hey, Kazan. Say hello to everyone. Yes. Stick over here. We take it from all the guns. Yes. We're jumping on the exit. Everyone get the refugees into the underground tunnel. George? Tabloid? All right. Understood. As you all saw, we have a problem. The princess went by herself into the maintenance area and has shut us out. I said we were going to take down the space elevator, but it's not like we can just go out there and chop it down. At the top of the windbreak, six location markers have been set in place. They monitor distortions in the space elevator. Those are the locations we need to target. If the sensors go bad, the elevator's observation system will think the elevator has fallen. Until its safety can be confirmed, all microwaves will be stopped. Inform the coalition units. We're nearing zero hour. Ten seconds until the united attack on the arsenal bird. Incoming! Five, four, three, Everybody, give this two, attack everything you've got. Open fire! Readying its APS. All aircraft break off from the arsenal. 
I can't just snap my fingers and make a plane. Believe me, I wish I could. Right now, we needed one. Bad. When we were coming over on the boat, I remember seeing an aircraft carrier. That gave me an idea. The Admiral Anderson. The name of an old sailor. 
When the first drone started attacking, the ship wasn't ready for battle yet. It was still in the dock, getting all rigged up. So they rushed to get her ready. I know about Anderson. In the previous Ocean War, he was the commander of a ship that sent out the last fleet of jets. They say the deck was sloping so bad as it sank, the last plane barely made it off. Those fighters ended the war. That story gives me a little bit of hope, especially at a time like this. We're all in the same boat, like it or not. If this war keeps going on like it is, it'll be the end of everything. The military loaded this thing to the rafters with planes. Some were fighters that were going to be delivered to bases in occupied territory. It was hit before it could complete the mission. Jackpot. The hangars were loaded with goodies. This scrap queen's got work to do. Trigger, everyone, listen up. The operation was a success. Erosion defense forces have been neutralized and all arsenal birds are down. However, those two new drones buzzing around have royally screwed up our plans. The Ocean and Erosian Coalition's air forces are in a sorry state thanks to them. We might not even have any viable aircraft. According to the Scrap Queen, the drones are trying to use the space elevator's transmission capabilities to send their data to drone manufacturing plants across the continent. They're trying to strengthen their numbers. What's worse, their data contains a depth of war experience, so the newer aircraft will be more tactically advanced. If that's the case, this war will never end. We need to take both drones down no matter what it takes. We'll do it! So we have homes to go back to. Well, the Scrap Queen's on our side. She says she can make any aircraft fly. This is our final mission. Trigger, let's go. We've got a goddamn war to end. Strider Squadron, take off prep complete.
shot down at Bull Rest. Is that the prototype that Wiseman was talking about?
Strider 1 has returned to radar. <laughs> I did it! That's our trigger! He's a damn hero! Ah! No doubt. You're better than me. Where's Strider 2? Damn it. Does anyone have eyes on count? Wish y'all could have seen that. <laughs> you damn fool. What's your position? Watching Trigger climb. I guess it's my fate to watch from down below. Yeah, well, we're all in the same boat there. Yeah, well, I guess we are. We're sending help. Give us your coordinates. Directly under the space elevator. Elevation is minus 500 meters. Minus? Hey, Trigger. You dumbass. Tell me something. What color's the sky up there? Belt. I can't tell you how proud I am to be the first to land Wait, this what was that board. transmission? This is Captain K. Nagase of the spaceship Pilgrim One. The ocean of stars in our galaxy is finally within our reach. To the pilot who generously gave this spaceship a place to dock, we are forever grateful. The universe lies ahead of us, waiting to be discovered. And now, at last, we have a gateway to ascend to it, over and over again. It's all coming together for me. Today was the day, the moment of her return. I salute the pilot who gave us all a future. Skies unknown. The path to mankind's vast future remains standing, Grandad. The refugees built the settlement for themselves at the base of the space elevator. A humanitarian mission from Yuktuvania airdropped some supplies for them again today. Thanks to the princess, the whole world was pitching in to help these people. Handing out the relief supplies would have been a perfect gig for that anarchist dude. But since he's dead now, the job went to the guy from Belka, George. I guess Tabloid got that new system he wanted in the end. Mihai's granddaughters are helping out too. Mihai. That cranky old geezer's here with us, too. I never wanted to create anything, and now here I am, clinging to life. Watching as my grandchildren and their generation make a new future for themselves and the world. Is this my punishment, then? All I do is lie here, wasting away. I'll never know the freedom of flying the open skies ever again. I've been grounded, and my wings have been clipped. You know what having peace in the world means? It's being able to die in your own bed at a ripe old age. Peace is what those girls are working so hard for here. We got a bunch more refugees today. And the princess? She's looking to the stars. dark blue, to the heavens and beyond. Tu te souviens de nos fenêtres préférées qui chantaient tout près de nous du jour de ta déclaration d'amour. 